Hi YouTube, it's Katie again, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about why I chose dental school. And, um, it's kind of a long story, so that's why I have a video about it. <laughs> I'm actually currently taking a gap year right now, but next year I will be going to UPenn um, for their seven-year biodental program, Go Quakers. So it's kind of an unusual story, but I decided that I wanted to become a dentist when I was in third grade. Um, I had always been um, a little bit extra interested in like oral care than most little kids because my dad um, used to be in the Navy. He was a medical officer in the Navy. And so I, uh, he was deployed from when I was like half a year old to like 18 months. So for almost a year or exactly a year actually, that, that would be math. But anyways, um, so he missed a lot of my first. So he missed like my first steps, my first word, um, a lot of those things, but my teeth, fortunately, grew in really slowly. So it was like our daddy-daughter bonding to um, brush our teeth every day um, before we went to bed or in the morning and like mouthwash and everything um, and flossing, flossing is important. Um, so that's like initially why I became, why I was interested in um, oral care. And I actually originally wanted to become a tooth fairy when I grew up, but then I decided that um, you can't become a tooth fairy. Tooth fairies are born tooth fairies, and they just grow up to become tooth fairies, and you can't go from a human girl to an adult tooth fairy. So um, I started looking into dentistry. Seriously though, as I grew older, I looked more into dentistry as a job, um, and I found that it matches a lifestyle that I want pretty well. Um, so it's a pretty good lifestyle, uh, and you can get a job pretty much anywhere that you want to live, so I could live abroad if I wanted to, and I could probably most likely get a job. Um, and it also helps you bring a better smile to the world. So, um, when I was in my sophomore year of high school, I started becoming a little bit more serious about um, my goals of becoming a dentist when I'm older. And so I started shadowing my family's dentist and I shadowed my friend's mom who helped me connect with other kinds of specialty um, dentistry fields. So I got to um, shadow a periodontist, an orthodontist, an oral surgeon, an oral maxillofacial surgeon. I saw how implants are created. Um, just, I saw a lot of the different aspects of dentistry and rather than getting bored with it, I discovered that I was getting more and more interested every time I shadowed another dentist. So I decided that really dentistry is for me. Um, I also decided to shadow different kinds of physicians um, to see really the difference between dentistry and um, being a physician. So. Um, that way I could really decide, is it really just oral care that I'm interested in, or is it all kinds of medicine? Um, so I did a lot of medical related things as well, because it is kind of hard to specifically go after dental things when you're in high school and you can't really like do actual internships. Um, for my college application, although there are many different direct um, direct dental programs in the country, I only applied to two and they were VCU's direct dental program and the UPenn biodental seven year program. I was fortunate enough to get into both of these schools and um, yeah, for the rest of the colleges that I applied to, I applied to just as a regular student, not with a specific track in mind. Okay, so I decided to apply to UPenn because it is the only Ivy League school that has a dental school straight through program. It also has a seven year biodental program, which means that you get done with it in seven years rather than the usual eight. So it's three years of undergrad and then four years of dental school. And although it is really pricey because it is UPenn, um, at least 
one less year of tuition undergrad so um, for that interview I so I had an alumni interview for the UPenn biodental program and it was with a dentist who graduated from the dental school of UPenn I'm not actually certain if she went to the undergrad, but I do know that she graduated from the um, dental school. It was an online interview because there weren't, um, there wasn't anyone closer to me uh, where we could feasibly meet and it was very terrifying. I have to say I don't love online interviews. Um, it was just harder for me to gauge her reactions to what I was saying because the camera kind of cut off the rest of her face under her nose um so I feed off of body language in interviews and it was not helping um, I thought that I failed it completely um and I was terrified because I didn't think I was gonna get in after that interview um, she was just she was very very nice and everything I simply was not used to the format of interviews as being online for VCU, so Virginia Commonwealth University, it is the only in-state dental school in Virginia. So it's the only dental school in Virginia. Um, and it is the only straight through program as well because it has the only dental school. Um, the VCU's website for applications to their straight through program is very clear about their eligibility um, requirements in order for you to apply to their straight through programs. There is a website that you can visit and it did help me with guidelines of um, what I had to do in order to prepare for applying. So I fortunately um, had already been volunteering a lot in hospitals. So that helped me um, get a lot of the required hours that I had to do for medical related shadowing or experience. And that also helped me figure out what I should be doing to plan for my UPenn application as well. So um, the VCU website, um, which I will link down below, um, you can find um, all of VCU's guaranteed programs. They have the dental, the um, medical school straight through program. Let's see, let me double check so I'm not like lying to you guys about what they have, okay. So, okay, so they have clinical laboratory sciences, clinical radiation sciences, dental hygiene, dentistry, medicine, nursing, occupational therapy, pharmacy, and physical therapy <laughs> um, for all the straight through programs. And they have links to all of them at the website that I will put both on the screen and down below. However, one thing that you do need to be careful of is that there is a big difference between their eligibility requirements and their accepted students' profiles. So their, um, for example, for the dental school straight through program, the um, profile of eligibility requirements says to be eligible to apply for the guaranteed admissions program for dentistry, you must have a minimum of a 1330 combined SAT score from critical reading and mathematics from one test administration, so not super scored, or a nine, uh, sorry, a 29 ACT composite score. In addition, applicants must have a weighted GPA of at least 3.5 on a 4.0 scale or the equivalent. So um, those are the basic requirements in order for you to apply. The selection um, section of this website, which I also will link, um, does say that obviously test scores are not the only thing that goes into your application. So if you have the highest test scores, that does not necessarily mean you will get in. Um, but they do set that baseline for you. The um, profile for 2020 applicants, so, okay. The average unweighted GPA for accepted candidates of, for the fall of 2020 was a 4.0. Um, the SAT scores ranged from 1500 to 1580, critical reading and math, with an average of 1540. In addition, 
accepted candidates had accumulated an average of 280 hours of healthcare related experience. That actually also was, so it was for the 2020 applicants, so that included me. Yes. Yeah, so that included me in that statistic. For the application procedure, you do have to turn in your application by November 15th. Um, I think my year was like November 17th. You have an in-person interview. The medical school, the guaranteed medical school um, application website is also on, um, is also super easily accessible from the link that I mentioned previously. Um, and for those of you that are interested in the guaranteed medical schools application as well, these are the eligibility versus um, profiles for the fall of 2020. So the eligibility is, um, you must have a minimum of a 1330 combined SAT score from critical reading and mathematics from one test administration on your SAT or a 29 ACT composite score. In addition, applicants must have an unweighted GPA of at least a 3.5 on a 4.0 scale or the equivalent. So it is pretty much exactly the same as the dental school eligibility requirements. For the profile of a 2020 applicant for the medical school, it was applications were received from 680 high school seniors for the fall of 2020 entering freshman class. 64 students were elected, were selected for an interview in mid-March 31 students received an application 31 students received an acceptance letter. The average unweighted GPA for accepted candidates was a 3.91 and their SAT scores ranged from a 1330 to a 1560 critical reading and math with an average of 1490. ACT composite scores ranged from 31 to 36 with an average of 34. In addition, accepted candidates had accumulated an average of 450 hours of healthcare related experience. It doesn't say how many students were elected were selected for acceptance for the dental school, but I remember there were six of us, no, seven of us for the interview. Um, and then I only know of two other people that got in. Um, there were two people that I don't know about and then two people that I do know were um, rejected. So um, between three to five people got in out of the seven of us who were selected for interviews and I don't know how many people applied. Um, my, I was fortunate enough to be accepted by both of these programs. I heard about VCU in um, February and then I heard from UPenn on Ivy Day. My friend's sister went to the dental school, um, so I did ask her for advice on like how her dental school experience was and about her interview. She's actually the person who gave me the advice of creating, um, well, she gave me the inspiration for me to give all of my interviewers an origami elephant. Um, which was showing that I could um, make things with my hands because that is very um, important to dentistry. She had done, like she had brought little paintings with her um, to all of her interviews and she showed it to the interviewer, but um, because I thought that origami is just so portable and easy and you know, it doesn't, it's not exactly something super duper expensive so it wouldn't be, um, burdensome to give it to somebody for an interview, I did give it, uh, give every one of my interviewers a little origami elephant. And I think that did help me stay in the interviewer's mind and also give physical um, evidence, I guess, of my handiwork. Um, for the VCU interview, it was a full day affair. I had like three different interviews. One was with the dental school, like Dean, and then the other one was with um, the VCU honors college um, advisors. And then I think the last one was just like a whole group thing where we did um, with everybody. And then also we all had to write an essay. On the bottom of my essay, I actually drew a little monkey because I, I doodled a little monkey. So I'm gonna say that is what got me in. My little monkey that I drew.
at the bottom of my essay. I completely forgot what the essay was about, but I think it was about um, something that we had to use courage for. Um, so something that, oh, it was something where we were uncomfortable and how we dealt with it. I think that's what it was, but don't quote me on it. But um, during that interview day, we were brought around the dental school, around the campus, around um, like the whole undergraduate campus, around the dental school. We got to see their labs and all their technology. It's pretty state of the art. The VCU program was pretty awesome, but I wasn't sure if I liked the undergraduate school. I, it was, it's really interspersed with, um, Richmond. <laughs> it's really, um, like, you can't really tell where the campus starts, where the campus ends, um, and then there's, like, a whole bus system that goes straight through the campus, and everyone goes onto it and everything, which isn't an issue, but for me, I just wanted more of a campus feel, and I couldn't get that from VCU. I felt it a lot more at Penn, even though it's also in a city, it's in Philadelphia, but their buildings are a lot more concentrated. It's in kind of like a more university area. It's really close to Drexel and Temple, but you can also tell where UPenn starts, where UPenn ends, and where Drexel starts, kind of, except for one video that's kind of confusing. <laughs> I mean, sorry, one building that's kind of confusing um, when you go visit the campus. So overall, I felt that Penn just fits my needs a little bit more. Thank you so much for spending your precious time watching this video. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Also, be sure to watch out. I am reading my college application essays as well, and I have a whole series going on for that. So please make sure you click that notification bell and keep an eye out for those. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.